September is Emergency Preparedness Month. This video is part of the 30 Days of Preparedness series, which is a collab between the following YouTube channels. Sutton's Days, Rogue Preparedness, Mouse Toes, Provident Preppers, Mama Bear Preparedness, The Urban Prepper, City Prepper, Ethical Preparedness, Iridium 242, The Happy Prepper, Freedom Homestead, and of course, me, Prepper Potpourri. Be sure to watch all the videos in the series. Now you can go out and buy a home first aid kit at your local drugstore or on Amazon. And there are kits that are not that great. Some are better than others and some are pretty good. But you know what? I think the best kit is one that you actually plan for what you think your family will need and one that you have enough supplies because often I find those kits might only give you like say five alcohol rubs and maybe 20 band-aids. Well, that's not enough. So today I'd like to go over what I think you need for a home first aid kit, your basic supplies. Now one thing you might need is an actual container and you can use anything that you have for first aid supplies although it's nice to keep it organized by use and so family members can easily see what's in there. So some people use craft organizing containers or tackle boxes. Um, let me show you what I use here. See, it says first aid kit on it, but it's repurposed. It was a makeup organizer and it really works great because I have various equipment in here and you can easily see what you need and I really like this bag. So again you could just go browsing around Goodwill and find a great container for your first aid kit. So first let's talk about some of the equipment I think you need to have on hand for your home medical kit. Now I don't think this really is called equipment, it's called a book. But have a good first aid manual on hand and read it, know what's in it, know how to get to something quickly. This has like colored tabs that tell you what area to get into, which is nice. But have a good first aid manual. Next, I think it's important to have a good blood pressure cuff. This is a battery operated one and I also have the more old fashioned one, this. But of course you need to use a stethoscope with this, but that way if you didn't have batteries, you could still take a blood pressure. So it doesn't matter which kind you use, just make sure you have something. It's always good to know what your normal blood pressure is, to take it occasionally, not just once a year when you go in for your exam. And if you have someone in your family that does have high blood pressure, make sure they're self-monitoring. Another supply, of course, you need to have a thermometer. And you can have this kind, or what seems to be very popular nowadays is right? The thermal kind. But either way, have a good thermometer. And if you got the thermal kind, make sure you keep extra batteries. So you will always know if somebody in your family is having a fever. Something I think you should also include in your kit is a pulse oximeter. And this really keeps track of the saturation of oxygen in your blood. And normally you want 95 or higher, you know, under 90 not a good thing. Uh, now with COVID, it becomes even more important to have this. Uh, if a person seems to be feeling fine, not trouble breathing, but they have a reading way under 90 on the pulse oximeter, you want to get them immediately into the ER because there is something definitely wrong and they need to be treated. So this can come in handy for COVID. It can also come in handy for seeing when someone has pneumonia or other lung diseases. Again, I think this is only 
maybe $30, $35, but it can really come in handy in your first aid kit at home. So also consider having a good flashlight. It can help you look in a wound. It can help you see if there's a splinter. And of course, a magnifying glass also comes in handy for seeing if there is a splinter. And talking about splinters, you want to have a good pair of tweezers. These tweezers also have a magnifying glass, which is kind of clever. But to take out a splinter or a sting, these come in handy in your kit. And you should have a pair of medical shears. Not very expensive and they can really come in handy, especially if you need to cut off somebody's jeans up where they have a big abrasion or wound at their knee level. Always have a good pair of medical shears. Now one last thing when I'm talking about equipment. Yep, important equipment is to have your cell phone charged or your landline working because you may have to call 911 depending on what is happening. And you should also in your cell phone have the poison control number and of course any physician numbers for your family members. Now, just in case, you should also have these typed up on a piece of paper and put in your kit. Just in case you're not there to actually help with something, another family member or maybe it's the babysitter has the information they need. Now another good thing to keep here, and again, not equipment, but is a short medical history of each family member. Um, if a member has something like diabetes, it should be noted. Uh, if they've had surgeries, note that. Any medication they're on, note that. Just a card on each family member is a great idea to include in your home first aid kit. So now we're gonna get into supplies. And what's the number one supply used in my family? That's right, it's Band-Aids. In fact, my husband seems to have a knack for that. And it's a good idea to have different size Band-Aids and like this is the one that goes on the end of a finger. These are great to have too. And of course, if you have little kids, you might want to have band-aids that actually have cartoon characters on it. Something to make them feel more comfortable when you're dressing their wound. But always have a lot of band-aids. Now something else you might want are the butterfly bandage strips or this is a much more expensive option, but this is zip stitch and it really can help keep a long wound closed. But you can also make butterfly stitches just with your adhesive tape, which is tape something like this. Now something you want a lot of is just that rolled gauze, right? because depending on what the wound is, you can get a lot of blood, and this is really absorbent, helps take care of the problem. So have plenty of roll gauze. Now, depending on the wound, you want bigger gauze pads. These are four by four, and there are even bigger ones available. And you may want what is called, um, these are, non-stick pads, right, that can go on a wound. I think sometimes they're called Teflac too. These are a good idea to keep on hand. Now, one other thing that you should include gauze-wise is the triangular bandage one. If you don't have that, you can easily use a bandana, you know, to go around here, go behind the neck and keep this up. But it is nice to always have some triangular bandages or I should say gauze, on hand. And I keep this little thing of hydrogen peroxide in my kit, but of course you can get a big bottle of it at the Dollar Tree, and there's even one that comes in a spray bottle. But this is great for wound cleaning, as long as it isn't a deep wound. Deep wounds, you should not be using hydrogen peroxide. But more surface wounds, it's fine. And no matter what kids tell you, it really doesn't hurt when you put it on. 
Now, of course, you want something like Neosporum or, you know, an antibiotic cream. Um, I also like this Spora... Sporocidin. Sporocidin. I'm probably not pronouncing it right, but this is a great antiseptic disinfectant towel to use. And of course, you probably also want some alcohol wipes in your kit. Another supply, have some disposable gloves, preferably non-latex. Uh, I have quite a few packages of these and there's a hundred in each, so they go a long ways, but you want to have them for your size. These happen to be small, so they fit my hand perfectly. But be sure, you don't need a hundred of them, but be sure you have some non-latex disposable gloves in your home first aid kit. Now, something else you can use for wound closure is just super glue. So you can keep one of those little tubes in your kit, or you can buy something very similar, but it is for medical purposes, and it's called New Skin. And this works great. Um, we used to always keep some when I was in a bowling league in case you got a little scraper cut, put this on top and that protects it. Now something else that can be injured is your eyes. So it's always a great idea to have an eye wash cup available. This makes washing the eye a lot easier and keep some saline eye wash sterile fluid on hand if you have to do that. One more thing I should talk about is, you know, you can get the ACE bandages, uh, and I didn't pull one out, but those are those flesh-colored, kind of elastic, stretchy bandages that go all around, let's say, your ankle, and then you use a little clip and a clip, and it stays in place, and it helps for any uh, sprains. Uh, I also like using Vet Wrap. It is very, very sticky. It is great for holding that gauze on, and it also works great on your horse's legs. But you can get this at Tractor Supply, and it does come in handy. Now, another frequent thing that we use our home first aid kit for are burns. I have a knack. If I've got something in the oven, I think my hand is longer than it is or whatever, but I always seem to burn myself. So I always keep a good supply of lavender oil. And to me, this is the best thing I know of to use for burns, and it's great for stings too. But you also might want something like Burn Gel Plus or Aloe Vera, something to help take some of the burn out of burns. And something you see in a lot of recommendations is to keep the disposable cold packs you can get those, I think, at the dollar store too. But since this is a home first aid kit, I always have some kind of veggies in the freezer. So, you know, still a frozen package of peas makes a pretty good compress. Or some ice cubes in a Ziploc bag. But you might also want to carry the disposable cold packs. One other thing that you might want to include in your home first aid kit is something to make splints of. You know, for a finger splint, a couple popsicle sticks work well. And of course, those also work for, right, looking down the back of your child's throat to see if they have strep throat or something else. And you can actually buy um, aluminum splints, which work well, but you can also make your own splint with, you know, just whatever you have on hand. Now, I also have an uh, ankle splint, and I take this when I'm going on vacation or going hiking because I have a knack for turning one of my ankles, and this really comes in handy. So if you have some kind of problem like that, you want to keep those type of splints on hand in your kit. And of course, nowadays, make sure you have hand sanitizer and extra masks, right? These now are essential in your home first aid kit. Now something I don't keep really in my kit, so to speak, but is in a cupboard high up so kids can't reach it, medications. That's part of your home first aid kit too. You know, you want to have anti-pain medications like Tylenol and anti-diarrhea medication, um, Benadryl in case of allergies. 
and it's always good to have some of those little small aspirin, you know, baby aspirin, because if someone in your family you suspect is having a heart attack, have them put one of those under their tongue immediately, and that baby aspirin could save their life. So it's good to have that in your medicine cabinet too. But also you want cough drops, right? If somebody has a sore throat, uh, anti-mucus type drugs, drugs that help for colds, you know, all those type of medications. You want to have them on hand just in case you need them so you don't have to run to the nearest drugstore. So you got your whole home first aid kit put together and you're pretty proud of yourself, right? But there's one more thing you have to do. You have to make sure you check it regularly, at least annually. Check your kit and see if there's any problems. Um, you know, family members might have taken something out and not put it back or used something up and not told you. So you always want to make sure that your home first aid kit is equipped the way you want it. And of course, it's also very important to let family members, caregivers, you know, babysitters know where you keep your kits. That is also very important. Now, maybe you're getting to the next stage and you want to have more of an intermediate kit. You want to add to it. Well, you know, the first thing I think you should do, take some additional classes, be it at the Red Cross, your local hospital might uh, offer them, but take some classes in first aid or survival medicine. It, you know, knowledge is just as important as all of these supplies. So that's it for our basic first aid kit. Now, if I forgot a supply that you think is essential, please comment below. I have also listed all these supplies underneath this video. So if you wanna check on your kit and see if you have what I think is important, you can easily do that. As always, Please keep on prepping and please share the knowledge.